the mother of all boo-boos so when I was cleaning out uh, a junk folder and cleaning out uh, just to make some room on the hard drive while I was editing video uh, I thought off the last video I was just deleting some of the shots and I deleted the first part of this episode luckily enough it was the eyes and we have two of them so the first part is we missed this uh, contrasting color going into this eye there's only a small amount uh, so hopefully we've got enough from this eye uh, to show you through so this video i thought rather than splitting it into two and doing the final color we've put everything into this video uh, at this point i have no idea how long it's going to take uh, how long the video is going to be but we're going to put it all together for you so you can finish your best monotone portrait ever. So again, really, really minimal. 
Uh, we don't want to be covering this stuff. We don't want to go over everything we've done. And we just want to be looking in the reference for the really for the darkest parts. I'm not going to touch uh, the majority of that, apart from the parts that really, really need it. Okay, so just by doing a couple of those uh, little darker parts, you can see already how much is changing the painting. Uh, so what I want to do, I'm, I'm going to try and stick uniform. Like I've, I've mentioned before, again, I'm really erratic as a painter. So I'll do this little bit there, then I'll drop down to here, and then I'll fancy doing this piece, and then I'll drop up there. But I'm going to try and let, let's work down the painting so we can finish off uh, with the shoulder area and the clothing. So let's move up. Um, to the top we've got a few little minimal bits to add in there and some texturing which we're going to do along the way um, but I wanted to start with the eyes because it always gives me uh, encouragement I see it now from this point and now I'm excited I really want to get it done um, it, it just keeps me motivated to do it every time I look at it I want it to be the best painting I've ever done um, and I hope uh, for you uh, who are watching it and coming along with it, I hope it's going to be your best painting you've done as well. Uh, so let's move up with this darker colour up to the top there, uh, and let's start with the hair, and we'll start moving down uh, down the painting, and hopefully finish off just at the bottom. So I've got my uh, trusty hairpiece or wire. Uh, just in case I want to add leaving some of that lighter colour behind the best I can just adding some of that texture and we've got a tiny tiny little sort of shadow darker area there that's enough So I'm more tinting what I've already done at this point. Going close and I needed to keep the accuracy. side we've just got a touch
So I've just noticed on the reference that this is quite sharp, so that edge of there. Uh, but the shadow is not on the hair, it's on the forehead. So I'm going to reach for my stencil, I'm going to find uh, one of my freehand shields, or maybe I'm going to cut one just to help me paint that in. So what I've done for these, I've, the photo copy I had originally, I've just used that just to help me get that sharper sharper edge I was looking for. That's better. It looks a lot more like the reference. <clears throat> Okay, I hope you can see that it's just minimal. We're just adding those darker tones where we need to. Um, I'm happy with what I've got there. If I've taken out too much or I've lost some of my uh, original work, I can just take the eraser again. just add the odd strand and just to pick it back out again <clears throat> so let's move So I'm going to need the cut out again because we've got this sharper area there which was really dark. I'll show you this on the reference. So this this is the area we're going to add in. So we're going to need that to be quite dark. Um, so I'm going to cut uh, the shape for that now uh, so I can paint that in so I don't get all my background uh, contaminated so let's cut that now okay so again I've used that old reference that old cut out um, sorry the photo copy just to cut now I don't just want to lamp the color in this uh, I don't just want to trail it in I want to establish the shape I want to reach for my wire if I can find it. And block out some of uh, that. just so it's not a complete uh, dark block so let's keep some of the top as well
let's have a look. Okay, so now we can add in the rest. Remember those wispy And remember the movement was quite fast. Get some more of that. Very, very light. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so it's really starting to make a difference now. Uh, it's really starting to get that contrast. And um, all my values are starting to, to come together. I can start to see I need to be darker in some areas. There's, now I've added that contrasting colouring, I can see that my first layer um, could have been maybe darker in places, could have been more saturated with that colour. Um, I really don't want to go back with that first colour now. Uh, I want to try and keep it as it is. Again, I'm not looking uh, for photorealism. This is a, a airbrush art, uh, and I want to try and get the best airbrush art I can. Um, and I like to do things freehand if I can, uh, but I also like to use a lot of tools to, to help me get the effect I want. Uh, but I'm really pleased with this. It's, uh, it's looking ace. As soon as I add those little bit of highlights in, which I'm fighting off, uh, adding those extra bit of highlights in the eyes again. Uh, but while I've got this colour in, uh, we're going to move down uh, from this area. I'm just going to darken the nose because we've got this sort of shadow underneath the nose. I've got a little mistake there which I made in the first colour, but hopefully I should be able to hide that uh, and then start into that beard. We sort of we start to come down and then we're going to add in uh, the shoulder pieces. Uh, again, as soon as that darker colour is in with that shoulder area, it's going to completely transform the painting. It's just going to get all the contrast that we need. Uh, and it's also going to border off uh, the beard so we can start to add some of those little uh, wispies. So let's drop down into that nose. Uh, let's get that nose in and contrast it up. And then we, again, it should change the painting uh, another, another step up. Okay, so I've pinched the shape uh, from the photocopy again. So I've literally cut the nose out. So this will help me get that dark line. Now, my advice here would be just to do a, a bit. And let's check. Oh, wow, you can just see uh, straight away. The only reason I say do a bit is because I want to make sure that 
some of what I did in the early uh, part was majority freehand, so I may have strayed from the reference slightly, so the nose may have been just a little bit of a different shape. look at that you can just see just lifts that nose up off the paper um, so now I'm going to reach for my friend the wire again just to help me add some of these darker areas into the moustache Let's go underneath. Let's have a little bit of a tinker with this. Just lift that moustache up. Just want to darken <clears throat> just under there. I want to leave that little bottom lip just peeking out a little bit. I don't want him to look like he's got a massive lip either, and um, so I've just got to be careful. And as not to keep him looking like Hitler too much longer, 
Uh, I'm going to just start and take out some of these lighter. I'm gonna, not going to go mad with it. Uh, just looking in my reference and seeing just some of the foremost uh, hairs and just picking those back out. I don't know whether I explained before um, that I cut this sort of in a wedge. Uh, what I do when I'm rubbing it on there, I'm just sharpening it really. Uh, and also the paint can get clogged up on the end of the eraser, so I tend to just clean that off. Uh, the masking tape's ideal for it, or just plain paper. Uh, and it just sort of sharpens it again for me. So I can get a little bit more of a cleaner some of it I'm going to reach for uh, the blade as well some of them are quite sharp I'm gonna to have to go in and knock some of these back I think just depends on how sharp they become so this is the time when I mentioned before that I was going to leave the bottom the lip area so all these sorts of ones that hang over and uh, now is when I'm going to add them in He's got quite a little bit of a bushy moustache going on now. got to be careful with the blade really um, the paper doesn't like it too much you can get a nice little scrape with it but it doesn't like too much repetitiveness on it um, so it's remember more than if you can feel the blade digging in uh, just change the angle of the blade so you're more scraping rather than digging in so just sort of scrape the top along and of course remember to be really random overlap 
cross them over. So before I go any further, I can see that there's the odd little tiny highlight in this lip. Only very subtle. I think I just need to round off, it looks like it's rounded off this bottom end. I always remember Donald Sutherland in, uh, is it a film Backdraft? He plays that uh, nutter that's locked away. Uh, he's an amazing actor. Plays a really good psycho. So now my darks are starting to come in, I can see that obviously on the side of this beard here I need to bring in some of that uh, darker tone. This is why the sort of transparency of it works quite well, uh, hence why I try not to use an opaque uh, for this part. So nice and light, it's always better to be in the position uh, that we can add more paint uh, once we've gone a little bit too too dark with it or too much too much paint it's so much more difficult to remove it so let's go back with Just the same as we did with the top of the moustache. Now some money working really, really light. Let's uh, mix this up a little bit and. Some uh, overlap. Just need darkening on that top edge. Just to add in this little bit of the shoulder there, as it's not uh, the black or the darkest shade yet, I should be able to get away with it a little bit. I'm spraying on a larger area and you should be able to see that the, the violet tones are 
that are coming out. Let me grab a shield. You also notice the angle I'm using the airbrush at. So I'm using the air angle at this sort of direction down that so I don't get any overspray going that way so I always sort of angle it back uh, to that area it's quite dark underneath there as well but by the time I've put these overlapping wisps into that that's going to give me that edge but look at I'm keeping the edge quite on it I'm doing lots and lots of dots Try and I'll do the other other side. downwards again also in the reference that the, the tops of the shoulders there uh, they're quite sharp so I could shield them in but what I like to do is add um, if I use a free hand stroke on there they'll give you that sort of softer out of focus look so it adds uh, like a depth of field uh, to the painting which makes it a lot more sort of interesting
Okay, I'm going to leave these bottom areas. You can fill them in with that colour. Now, notoriously, I tend to leave paintings unfinished. I quite like the look of them unfinished. Um, I love to leave the sort of the bottom areas uh, incomplete as such. So now I'm just going to re start reworking uh, some of these stray hairs, as you can see, that go over there. I want to be able to add them in uh, if I hadn't have done that first. So I'm just going to start and... This part, um, it's always important to try and keep the discipline, keep your patience. Uh, the end result will will be worth it. Instead of a little bit like I possibly mentioned earlier with the skin tone, instead of just doing one, two, three, four, and moving over and covering up the whole area. 
look at the reference see how much is there they don't have to be perfect but you'll see how intense they are you'll see how many there is Just pay attention to the general direction that they're going and just roll with it, they, they'll come. Now I have got a uh, water based tack cloth, these are automotive um, tack cloths for, for water based paint. And I find because I've been doing a lot of erasing, scraping, the painting's going to pick up um, a fair amount of sort of dirt, dust, scrapings. Um, so I like to overspray as well. So I like to pick, you can just see how dirty that's got. Uh, and that'll help clean it up, keep it up. So that one of the last things I want to do is uh, spray over an area and uh, have bits of paint come off because it was full of uh, overspray, bits of scrapings, erasing, etc. really starting to come together now.
Okay, so I'm going to switch back to the airbrush for a second because in the reference there are some darker uh, sort of hairs. These tend to just start to struggle over, mainly as well because of the, the lighter background. I need to be really switched on. Uh, with my airbrush at this point uh, it needs to be flowing well so a couple of drops of uh, the reducer or a thinner or water whatever it is that you're using just to make sure it flows really well and remember that little sort of exercise Uh, we did in the early couple of episodes with speed replicate the movement first Again, I'm moving really, really quick, but I'm, I'm pulling the trigger back quite a fair way, to be honest, uh, because of the speed I'm moving. I think that will pretty much uh, do us. Let's have a look, let's just add a couple. Now, there's a couple of ways you could do this one would be really really time consuming uh, and take forever to do uh, is basically cut a little slit into a piece of paper uh, or some ultra mask um, ultra mask rather than frisky i find frisky it's way too sticky uh, and has a tendency to leave glue behind And you can probably hear on camera that the heavens have just opened up. Okay, let's have a step back and have a quick look at what we've got so far. Okay, so there we have it so far. Um, there's a couple of areas I need to lighten up. I need to just lighten up some of this area. I'm not too happy with that. Um, a little bit underneath the moustache really pleased with how these uh, little wispies came out uh, it really adds to that sort of uh, wiry look to the beard um, so at this point now I just want to have a look if there anything I've missed anything I need to be darker before I move to the final colour which is going to be just the black um, to be honest I might just add the odd one drop two drops uh, of violet to it just to give it that uh, uh, black can sometimes kill uh, a painting even when it's like this uh, so sometimes I don't always use a full black so just something in it just to um, give it that little bit of uh, warmth or that little bit of kick um, it'll do it the world of good uh, but at this point you could stop where you are if you're happy with that and how it is and you're frightened you don't want to go any further then please don't uh, but what we're going to do it's only going to be very minimal we're probably going to just touch the pupils uh, we're going to put the black just off the top of his shoulders a little bit uh, and to be honest might just touch a little bit underneath the beard uh, just to finish it off 
Um, so I think I just want to add a little bit more here just to darken just the sides of the faces there. Um, just having a quick look at the reference and it's showing that it's a little bit darker. Um, so yeah, let's get into that. I'm going to add a few more uh, strands of hair and highlights around there. And I'm going to call this stage finished. So what I was doing there is just adding a little bit, very very lightly, just adding parts uh, that I think needed just that little bit extra darkness. I know one of the things I forgot um, from early part was to put back in a couple of those eyelashes. okay okay so for the final touches uh, I'm just gonna go in with my final color which is the black I'm using the airbrush series black um, with a couple of drops of reducer just to keep it flowing really well and I just want to darken off just add that final
So pupils, the darkest shadow underneath that nose. And depending on your portrait, whichever one you're doing, whichever one you're working on. And just hit the minimalistic part. So just, we don't want to be going with black everywhere. Uh, because as mentioned before, it does tend to kill uh, a lot of colour. Um, So again, I'm just going with this freehand. If you want to go back with a torn paper and do those little parts, then please do. Don't force it at this point. Um, it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, and I'm just going to finish off with this black, uh, mainly just on the shoulder. So I just want to move the camera out to touch. So with these shoulders, I don't really want to go into uh, the hairs that I've done, try and stay clear, but what I want to do is put this slight fade just into that violet colour. If you look at the reference, uh, if you've, any of you found this same reference online, uh, the tops of the shoulders are really dark, which I'm going to pick as the black, and the fade down into that lighter colour. Again, I'm using the angle just to let that blend down. And we've got one final step to do, and it's my one of my favourite parts. picking out these final these final highlights which really bring the eyes to life so I always do uh, obviously the, the main highlight um, and I'll look for any change in the whites of the eyes but what, whether it's in the reference or not I always add just a little one underneath that bottom just to make it give it that sort of wet sort of look to it and obviously in the corners And there we go. So there's still a few parts which I'd like to tinker with maybe. Just make this underneath there a little bit lighter. Um, I think I just need to identify some of uh, the facial hair underneath there. But on overall, I'm really pleased. It looks good. I think I'm going to frame it and stick it on the wall in the studio at the Academy. And... Uh, 
enjoy it for the for the time <clears throat> so we've just taken off the tape um, to leave that nice border uh, and that'll be perfect for us to, to to frame it and get it up on the wall so there we go all done complete finished um, to be honest I could probably spend another couple of hours tinkering with it just especially around the facial hair uh, but I hope this has helped you get your best monotone portrait ever uh, if this is the first video you've seen from me, please consider subscribing. Uh, we've got loads more to come over the winter months, so when it's, it's dark and it's cold and you want to get in that studio to airbrush, we've got loads of projects coming. We've got some new features coming also, uh, and some big news. Uh, so we'll see you next time.